Hi again, everyone. I'm Ollie Matthews. This is Refuge from Narcissism, and this refugee video is sponsored by Contribution from Anonymous, and here's his story. Hi, Ollie. Well, it's been four years, no contact from toxic family of origin terminators. This is such a big accomplishment for me personally and still working on it. The first two years were very hard, but now it only bothers me occasionally, and I can get out of the funk of it much faster. I especially like your video about what to say to new friends, and that was right on. I don't have to worry about new friends or any kind of friends, but I can still relate to that video. I can say enough good things on. I can't can't say enough good things about that video. Right on. I've chased every possible friend away by acting out as an out of control scapegoat does. Didn't realize what was happening until four or five years ago when everything changed, when I found out that most of my problems were caused by still being trapped in the role of family scapegoat. Wow, it's, that's, <clears throat> that's funny because I just talked about, I just talked about my friend Tom. In, in 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 my last video i just talked about my friend tom where he is he's my age he's 48 he has been playing the role of family scapegoat for 48 years for 48 years he's been playing this role of because His family was saying he was had something mentally wrong with him because he got hit by a car at 15. But, you know, there were there were his family had been saying there was something wrong with him before that as well. Okay? And what the problem was was his mother is a borderline. His father enabled the shit out of her. Let her get away with all her fucking borderline crazy. Okay, would beat the shit out of him, his older sister, never touched the younger brother, to the point where when my mother, when we were joking around, and my mother walked behind him and he said so, he ducked. It's like I ducked. Because he was so used to getting fucking hit in the head all the time. And what he did was. The reason he was acting out was so he can play this role of this crazy person because his fucking family needed that. They needed him to be fucking crazy so they didn't have to deal with the mother's bullshit and their own bullshit so they don't have to confront her and tell her to fucking stop. As long as he's fucked up, well, then, then, then no problem. And he carried this on into his 20s. To the point where we're living together in Lodi. We have an awesome fucking apartment. And again, I had shit going on too. This is when this is when my ex-wife did what she did with the pregnancy, okay? And got herself moved in to my apartment. And within two weeks, two weeks, this is, and, and this happened before she moved in. This is probably why I had her move in as well. In like two weeks, like I noticed like his personality is like he's just nasty at me. I'm like, fucking dude, what is finally I stopped like, what is your fucking problem these last two weeks? And he goes, I'm hooked on cocaine. I'm like, what? What? What do you mean you're cool? What, what? Who, what, where, what, who, with who? And he would hang out with this fucking retard, Sean, this fucking loser, Sean, this fucking lifetime fucking hanger on, Sean, who got busted trying to pick up an underage chick online. Yeah, I know about that, Sean. Fucking creep. I don't know why Ty would keep this kid around, okay? Because, and I figured out, because he would, he would enable Tom, I guess, when he was doing his crazy, crazy shit. Because he didn't do that crazy, crazy shit with me. With me and him, it was all about getting girls. It was 
all about girls and hanging out down the shore and doing fun fucking shit. We didn't do drugs. We didn't drink. Like, we'd go to the club, we'd, have a club, we'd grab a beer or two. And the beer was just something to hold to talk to the fucking women. That was it. But this guy, and then he hung out. See, and Sean hung out with these other guys who ended up being fucking cokeheads. And he was their hanger-on. And Tom was cool, and they all liked Tom. So, yeah, they'll take Sean because Tom's coming along. And Tom saw it as, and Tom saw it, I guess, as a way to get, to give his family what they fucking wanted. To continue to be that fucking problem. So he goes, and he was determined to get himself hooked on coke and booze. And he's drinking scotch, apparently. I've never seen the guy drink hard liquor ever in my life. Now he's on fucking coke and scotch. And he literally within a month, he flushes his whole goddamn, basically his whole life down, his whole whole life away. And in the meantime, you know, I'd run into his father and he moved out and we had a falling out for years, obviously. And I'd run into his family every now and again. Oh, poor Tom. Oh, yeah. And the entire time, I'm thinking the reason he's doing this is because all you. And he's been doing well. And he's been doing well for you. Still doing well. He still says, you know, he hasn't he hasn't touched any drugs. It's just now that his mother died because his mom died not long ago. Now his sister's taking the role of the mother, and he's ready to go right. I'm like, whoa! And this is where I'm getting the calls. I can't do it anymore. And I had to tell him, stop being their fucking scapegoat for your entire life. Stop it, because I understand doing it. I scapegoated myself for my family as well. How did I do it? By playing dumb. By acting like I was dumber than I was. By allowing myself to be filmed doing stupid things that I know were stupid at the time. That I knew what I would end up being made fun of for it. Why? Because it was just easier. Because I'm playing the fucking role like an idiot. I'm doing this at like 12, 13... All to play the role. You don't even know why you're doing it, but you're fucking doing it. So I understand the role of the family scapegoat, and you're playing into that role as the family scapegoat. And the problem is, <clears throat> when it comes to friendships like that, you end up doing the same thing with your friends. See, with me, I'm different. Like, because once I accepted, like, like, stop doing this. Stop dumbing, acting like you're dumb and you're idiots around, like you're an idiot around these people and show them how. F so I stopped doing that. And I ended up just ended up being bored by most people and just, I ended up ghosting a lot. Now I have a couple, a couple dudes I hang out with down here and it's all good. I do most of my do most of my friendships and chatting online. Okay, why? Because it's very easy just to just to X out of it when I'm done. Because when I'm done, I'm done. When I'm done, I'm done. And that's just how we are now. When no contact finally started, it was like the real beginning of my life. Exactly. Exactly. Once you're gone, you can then start up and start at like with these people. And believe me, I dropped the dummy routine. I dropped the dummy routine in high school. Okay. But all that did was motivate my father. Oh yeah, motherfucker. I'm always going to be bigger than you. Strong, stronger than you be able to do whatever. No, you're not. You're just a dummy. You're just a fucking dummy. And that makes and that makes him hate you worse when you refuse to play the role, when you refuse to be the scapegoat, when you were the willing dupe of it, and then you stop and you refuse. Oh no 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 no! They don't want any of that. They don't want any of that. 
when no contact finally went when no contact finally started it was like the real beginning of my life it is great but it is also a very slow and hard process of realizations and change maybe some of your hardcore fans remember that video where you said that's some jerry springer shit right there you laughed because my family situation was so pathetic and ridiculously messed up a psychiatrist once said that it's not your parents that fuck you up they only help you fuck yourself up no they fuck you up no, 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 they, 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 they fuck you up, okay? You're a blank slate as a child. Yeah, you got your genetics and you got your DNA, but this stuff is all learned behavior. It's all a reaction to how you were raised, to how you were treated, to being unloved, to being a fucking perpetual scapegoat. And then accepting, and then too many of just accept that's your lot in life and that's your role. It's not. That saying is kind of right in a way. The family of origin messes you up so much that you start acting out in all kinds of crazy ways. Then society punishes you and you get a bad reputation. The ignorant fools that make up society say stupid things like, you're just a bad apple. Society never sees the shit you went through growing up because they don't want to. Because society as a whole, okay, well, in your generation, on my generation, okay, not these younger ones, because these younger ones, these younger kids, okay, are growing up surrounded by sociopaths everywhere, everywhere. The people who say, who are saying, you're just a bad apple, are the ones who never had to deal with it. And they should be discounted anyway. And, and the reality is, and the sad thing is, we're never going to be able to have long-term friendships with people like that. You're just not. Because they're never going to get us. Because there's stuff that is programmed into us since childhood that you, you don't even know you're doing. You know, they don't understand how it comes when you're how it comes across. They take it the wrong way. You got excited and you get done with it. I'm not explaining myself anymore. I'm not doing it. I'm not explaining myself anymore. So you know what? I'll be the fucking bad apple. And sometimes it's just easier to act like the bad apple. Okay? Than actually have to explain all of this nonsense. Fine. Go ahead. Be the fucking... I'll be the bad apple. I'll help you think I'm the bad apple. If it'll just end this sooner. And make you just go the fuck away. And leave me alone. These stupid narc parents and enablers and flying monkeys act like they know you. All they know is their projections. Even though they never talk to you or listen to you, they tell you all about what you are thinking, feeling, and doing. Because they, they think they're God. This is, and this is why they, they, they hate channels like this. Because I'm able to tell you what they're thinking and doing. I've been telling you. Yeah, this is all projection. Okay, if you want to know what the narcissist is thinking, just sit back and listen to what they accuse you of. And you got their thought pattern. Because that's how they think. No different in your personal life than it is on TV, socially, societally, politically. It's the same fucking tactic. It's the same thing whatever they're accusing you of is what they are doing and thinking and that's why they do it and if you don't understand that if you don't understand that they will fucking destroy you because you don't understand like why why are you accusing me like i don't even understand like why well, because that's how your brain works and you're accusing me of this because that's what you would do. But that's not fucking me. That's not us. That's you, motherfucker. 
And then you fucking put it on me, you pin it on me, and make me think you could see something in me that I can't fucking see. And uh, like, fuck off. And it's at that point, too, that you actually kind of want to be that bad apple. Oh, you want to think I'm fucking bad? I'll show you fucking bad. <sighs> it's fucked up. How could they know what a silent, what a silent neglected shadow is thinking and feeling and doing? They don't. The end. Anonymous. They hope, they think they know because it's what they're thinking. Never forget the narcissist projects everything onto you. And the real goal is not to become that projection. Sometimes, and a lot of times, what you did, what I did, what my friend Tom did, You became the living embodiment of that projection. Why? Because it was easier than fighting it. Because fighting it gets you where? Fighting it gets you locked up. Gets you in, gets you in the loony bin. Gets you stuck on some fucking, some mind-altering medication like lithium. That's why. So... I hope that helps. Thank you so much for your contribution and your story, Anonymous. I really appreciate it. Thank you to everybody watching. Please leave any opinions or advice in the comment section below. And again, if you want your story read on the channel, you have a topic you'd like me to cover, something you'd like me to expose, you'd like to set up Skype, a phone call, have a private video made, you'd like to sponsor a video like this for someone who needs help and can't afford it, or just make a contribution to the channel in general to keep it supported, growing, and successful because this channel survives 100% on contributions from all of you. Without you guys, all of this goes away as this channel is completely demonetized by YouTube and Google. So if you like what you see here and you wanna see more videos like this, you know what to do with the PayPal and email links in the description box. Also, please like and share this video wherever you can. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't, and be sure to click the subscription bell to be notified of all my video uploads. I'm Ollie Matthews. This has been Refuge from Narcissism. Take care.